really the key here is equilibrium. So we're going to calculate the forces on this person standing on a diving board in equilibrium. So what does e equilibrium mean? Before, in the case of a point object, where we didn't care about the dimensions, then we had the following, F net equals zero. And yes, zero is a vector. And this, remember, there were two ways to think about forces. We could either know something about the motion of the object and then find something about the force, or we could find something about the forces and find the motion. So in this case, I know that the momentum is constant, that it's staying at the constant momentum. That means the total force has to be zero. And often we would write this as two equations. I'd say F net in the X direction is zero and F net in the Y direction is zero. But you can see here is if I have a pencil and I push on it with equal and opposite forces like this, it still rotates. So this by itself is not enough once we consider an object to be a rigid object. We also have to say the net torque about some point is zero. And of course, remember, uh, the magnitude of the torque is going to be equal to the magnitude of the distance from the force to the point times the force times the sine of the angle between them. And it's really a vector, but that's fine and good enough. Okay, so in this case, we actually get three equations, in, assuming this is a two-dimensional problem, which it is. So in, in the case of the diving board, what are all the forces acting on the diving board? So there's, th there's actually four forces acting on the diving board. Uh, first, we think about what is, what is pulling on it without touching. And in that case, there's only one thing, and that's the gravitational force. So I have the gravitational force on the diving board. And then I have the, the things that are touching it. I have these two support points, and then I have uh, the diver. So let me just redraw the, the diving board as just the board. I don't care about anything else. I only care about the board. So I have this, I'll call this N1. And then I have this one, N2. And then I have the, low, the gravitational force acts at the center of mass of the diving board. So that's right here in the center, mg. Now, remember, so I did show you that the center of mass is equal to the center of gravity, such that we can pretend like all of the gravitational forces on all parts of the board act just at this one point. And I'll link that video down here. It's right down there. See it? It's right. No, it's right. Wait. Okay. Uh, and then finally, we have the person. So the weight of the person does not act on the board. It's equal, it's, if I draw the force diagram for the person up here, I have uh, M person times G, and then I have uh, N board up. And these two forces are equal. Now, since forces come in pairs, if the board pushes up on the person, the person pushes down on the, uh, the board. And since the force pushing up on the board is opposite the gravitational force, but the person pushing on the board is opposite of that, we get this. So it, I'm going to put this M person G, but it's not. Okay, It's not the weight of the person. It's the normal force from the person. just happens to be equal to the weight. I know I'm kind of like being picky about that and everything, but I'm just trying to be right, you know? You know what I'm talking about? Okay. Okay, so uh, there's one other thing we need. We need some distances, so let's call this uh, L. And let's call, and the person's at the end. Okay, and let's call this distance S. So I, in order to do these three things, I need an origin and a point O. So, and it doesn't matter where, okay? It doesn't matter which my axis is. I'm gonna pick, the, the origin is my point O, and I'm gonna pick this point right down here. But I'm gonna redo the problem with it at another point because I care. Okay, so here's my point O. So now I can write down these equations using my forces right here. So let's write down the net force in the X direction. How much does that point in the X direction? It doesn't. How much does that point in the X direction? It doesn't. How much does that one point in the X direction? It doesn't. How much does that one? I know, okay. So th this is just zero equals zero. 
Now, what about the in the y direction? Well, this is pretty easy. I have n1. Now, these are no longer vectors because I, these are the y components of these forces. Plus n2. And I know if you know this problem, you know that there is something going on here, but I'm doing it this way on purpose. And then this one's in the negative y direction, minus m g minus m person g equals zero. And remember, that's not actually the weight of the person. It just happens to be equal to that weight of the person. So here, I, I know the, let's say I know the mass of the person, I know the mass of the board, I know g, but I, I have two things I don't know. I don't know n1 and I don't know n2. So I can't get it from this equation because there's nothing there. So I have to get it from another equation. So let's write down the net torque about point O uh, for this situation. Okay, so here is my point O. So torque net. So what is the torque that this normal force exerts about the or that point O? The answer is nothing because uh, the distance between that point and the force is zero. So if I find the torque, I get zero times F. So I get zero. This is like opening a door by pushing on its hinges. It just doesn't work. Okay, so I'm going to write zero. Now what about this one? Well, what's the distance from here to there? It's S. And is this going, so I'm going to get uh, a positive or negative torque? Well, if it's going, it would want to make it go counterclockwise. So that would be a positive torque. So I get plus S times N2. Now what about this one? It would want it to make it go in the negative direction, the negative, I mean the clockwise direction, which is negative. And this distance is L over 2. So it's going to be minus L over 2 mg. And again, these are not vectors because I'm already taking into account the vector notation, the vector direction with these signs here. And then finally, the, uh, the torque on this one is going to be minus L mpg. And add all those up and get zero. Okay, so now I, I know this is a fraction. Uh, I know everything but N2, so I can solve for N2. So let's solve for N2. N2 equals, I'm going to add that to the other side and divide by S. So I get uh, negative L, M, no, positive L, MG over 2S plus L, MPG over S. And that's it. So this is, let's check the units. This is a, uh, a weight, so it's a, it's a force. And then I have a distance divided by distance, so I do get a force, and that's a force. That's good, too. And the same thing for this. Uh, I could simplify the sum, but let's just leave it. Uh, I guess we will. Do I have room? Let's see. So that's going to be L times G over S times M over 2 plus MP. Now I can come back over here. Now that I know N2, I can solve for N1. So let's write that over here. So I get N1 equals this stuff, which is going to be, I'm going to add these two together. So I get M plus MP times G minus N2. So I get N1 equals M plus MP G minus L G over S. M over 2 plus MP. Now, here is something that we could find. If, which is bigger? This or this? Well, this one's going to be bigger. But what's bigger, L or S? Well, L's bigger than S. So it turns out, and I, I don't know if I can derive this right off the top of my head, but this, if I put it in my numbers for these things, and I could pick, uh, let's say, mass of the board is 10, mass of the person is uh, 50, L equals 4 meters, kilograms, kilograms, meters, and S equals... Uh, 0.7 meters. If you put those in, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen because I want to do another problem, uh, is that N1 is going to be negative. And that means that this diagram is wrong. In order for this whole thing to be in equilibrium, N1 actually has to be going down this way. 
I mean, in two. Wait, in one? I'm sorry. Yeah, that one. So imagine this. If, if I'm pushing on this diving board like this, I have to push up right there because I have to have something pushing it up or I'll fall. But then if I, I need to pull down on the back, right? So I'm pushing up and pulling down on the back and those balance, those two torques right there. So I have to pull down, which actually means I have to push up even harder on N2, but that's what you get, okay? So now, I, I'm going to set it up. I did say what would happen if you pick another point. Let's pick this point right here as the uh, the point about which I calculate the torque. If that's the case, then these two equations are still the same, right? I still have that same thing. The only thing different is this equation down here in uh, torque net. So let me write down the net torque. If that's my point, torque net O is going to be equal to, well, that one doesn't have any torque since it's at the point of rotation, so it's zero. This one is going to be L over two, and it's going to be a positive torque because it wants to make it rotate this way. Notice before it was a negative torque, plus L over two M G. Now, uh, what about this one's going to be a negative torque? And again, I'm going to assume that it's up because I was assuming I'm wrong. So I get this distance is what? Well, if this is L over 2 and this is S, then this is going to be uh, minus, let's see, how about we do this? Minus L minus S, because that's this distance, times MG. And then I get this one, which is going to be minus, oh, no, times N2. And then minus N1 times L equals zero. So my torque equation looks a little bit different. And first of all, you'll notice that I have two variables in here. I have N2 and N1, where before I had an equation with just N1 in it because the, or N2, the N1 went away. That's why I picked it because I had, I had a little bit of insight into the situation. So let's just simplify this. I get L2 over L over 2 mg minus, uh, I'm going to multiply this out, minus L, no I'm not, minus S N2 minus N1L equals zero. Now how do I solve this if I have two, equa two variables in there I don't know? Well now I'm going to have to use this equation right here. So I'd have to solve this uh, just like I did up here for N1, that's the same equation. Plug that in over here and then solve for N2. And I'm not gonna do it, okay, because I'm already running long. But if you did that, you would get the same thing. Okay, so the choosing your origin doesn't matter, except that it can make it simpler. So you wanna pick a point about which you calculate the torques where one of the torques goes away, one of the ones that you don't know. I, I wouldn't wanna pick it here because I know those forces, I know those forces, okay. Okay. So that's your first equilibrium problem. There's a whole bunch of these kind of things. I'm going to do some more um, equilibrium problems. So I will see you guys later.